second umbilical tower. Being a few hundred meters away from a rocket blasting off is sensory overload. The flash of igniting engines, the chest pounding vibrations. And lift off. We have lift off. The ear splitting roar as it slowly lifts skyward. Then just seconds later, it's mostly gone from sight. And for David St. Jacques' family, next came a wave of relief and a big group hug once word came nine minutes later that the Soyuz had reached orbit. St. Jacques' wife, Veronique, along with her friend, Julie Payette, the governor general, sounded elated. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling relieved. He's up where he wants to be and we're thrilled. And the kids were thrilled to see the rocket go. They were cheering for him. So we've got a great energy here. The rocket, the, sh the, the, the ground shaking just got to us. To see a rocket take off from Earth is, uh, is already quite impressive, but when there are human beings on board and human beings we love and we know, it's even more uh, an emotion. St. Jacques' journey began by leaving Baikonur's Cosmonaut Hotel, where he'd been in quarantine, waving to cheering crowds, and then taking part in another tradition, having his spacesuit fitted and a last chat with his family. Of course, his kids managed to steal the show. What did you have for breakfast, asked the oldest. An omelet and chocolate milk, he replied. Then it was off to the rocket and a final wave goodbye. The trip up to the International Space Station took four orbits of about 90 minutes each, ending in a successful docking. And then the hatch opening ceremony that brought everyone together again. And just as the launch was flawless, the rendezvous at the space station went smoothly too, as old and new crew had a quick chat with family and colleagues back on Earth. I'm overwhelmed by what I've been seeing, and I'm holding you and the kids in my heart. Of the Canadian Space Agency. His mission is expected to last more than six months, so he'll have lots of time to get used to his new, weightless home high above the Earth. Chris Brown, CBC News in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. Trip of a lifetime. Now, to watch the liftoff here in Canada, you had to wake up bright and early. And that's what lots of folks of all ages did. Some even through launch parties, one at St. Jacques' old school and one at the Canadian Space Agency's headquarters where an old friend showed up. The first time I saw David St. Jacques, he was making his own surfboard. So that's how so he is. Far, it's first stage performance, so he's delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust. He uh, likes to understand the way things function, so he was a born engineer. Everything looking good, vehicle is stable, good first stage performance. Do you think they'll see any aliens? No. No? <laughs> you don't believe in aliens? Aliens stay even live. <laughs> And we have confirmation of third stage separation. Single. David is an astronaut now. He is in orbit. So many Canadians understandably proud today. But what's next for David St. Jacques and the crew of Expedition 58? And, and for Canada's space program for that matter. Before a look at that, I'm joined by CBC Science reporter Nicole Mortolaro. So, Nicole, uh, David St. Jacques, he's up there now. So, so fill us in on, on the kind of work he's going to be doing. He'll be uh, quite busy. <laughs> he's going to be conducting at least 100 experiments, if not more. Many of them will be health-related because he himself is a doctor. Right. But he's also been trained to use the Canada arm. He's also been trained to conduct spacewalks. So should the need arise, and you never know what's going to happen up there, he is prepared to do that. Right. So, so, I mean, if we zoom out then for a moment and we look at the bigger picture, so Canada's long game, I mean, what's its role going forward, do you think? Well, I don't think many Canadians realize that we are really well respected in the space industry. Uh, we were the third country to have a satellite in space, Alouette 1. We produced the Canada Arm, which essentially built the space station that David's on right now. But we need to move forward. And so many people are calling for more investment, but what does that look like? Is it a private and public partnership, just like the US is doing with SpaceX? It could be. And SpaceX today launched 64 Canadian satellites, these CubeSats, these very small satellites into space, for a fraction of the cost that uh, it would 
be to send up Davi today. And a Canadian company. As you it's say. a Canadian company, and we don't even have a Canadian rocket program. Hmm. So I spoke with Gilles Leclerc uh, a couple weeks ago, and he is the uh, Director General of Space Exploration at the Canadian uh, Space Agency. And I asked him if we are doing enough. He said, no, we need a long-term strategy. And many people have been calling for this for quite some time. And many people feel that if we don't have one soon, we're going to be left behind. Okay, interesting. Lots to watch for. Nicole, thanks very much. Thanks.